German in Lima, Peru writes, and he says, placing my speakers the way you suggest in your book, The Audiophile's Guide, I realize that the stereo label actually told us the recording had a stereo effect. Now that I can already perceive the center phantom channel, there is something that bothers me. I can still feel the sound coming out of the left and the right speakers when I assume that these columns should disappear to achieve the full effect, as you say in your book. Now you see them, now you don't. How can I make my speakers disappear once and for all? Okay, two things. I have a new book out, shameless plug. Yep, well, I got to get a little bit of something, <laughs> right? So there's a new audiophiles guide out called The Loudspeaker, and it has its companion CD or SACD that was recorded here. Well, this is the mix room, but in Octave Studios. And it's, it is really uh, an evolutionary step in the, in the process. The, the book you have, The Audiophiles Guide, The Stereo, is excellent, but it doesn't take it quite as far as we'd want to go. And so in The Audiophiles Guide, The Speaker, you're going to find out a lot more about how to make the speakers disappear. But let's talk about that, because you're not here to hear me babble on about uh, the books that I write even though I spend a lot of time writing them. Um, so a couple of things. You'll notice that in this room, this is the mix room for Octave Records. You'll notice that in this room, the speakers, look how far they are from the rear wall. You know, what is this? Four feet, something like that, right? Arms length apart. That's very important. That really matters. They're away from the side wall. They are essentially pointed straight ahead and towed in a little bit. And this is one way of setting up a pair of speakers where they will disappear and you'll get sound coming from the sides, in the middle, up above, and in particular, behind. Most of the sound will come from behind. You'll also notice the diffusers. Now, this is a recording studio, so they're probably more extreme than you would want in your home, but they are essential to helping your speakers disappear. Because as the speaker and the direct sound comes out here, it's bouncing off the walls, it's coming back here and coming back at you time delayed. If you can diffuse it on the side walls, on the back walls, that helps the speakers disappear because it muddles everything up for your ears about directionality of sound that is reflected. Okay, so we have direct sound from the speakers, which is what we want, and reflected sound off the walls, which is not what we want. And if we can diffuse it so that your ear doesn't pick up on the specificity of where it's coming from and all of that, that really helps disappear. There is another way to make your speakers completely disappear. Uh, one that I don't have time to talk about in this video, but I can give you a little bit of a hint. And I go through in great detail in the Audiophiles Guide, the loudspeaker. So the two methods, this is method A, my, my preference, where the two speakers are pointed kind of straight at you, towed in ever so slightly, and we use the off-axis response to get our imaging, our depth, and our sound stage. The other way to do it is to take these speakers and push them all the way out to the edges, even further apart, and tow them in big time into the main listening area. Now, when you do that, they really disappear, really disappear. But you don't get anything to the sides. So all the sound stage is trapped right here and, and, and behind, which isn't bad. I mean. If you're a Wilson owner, you probably know exactly how. That's how most Wilsons are set up. They're kind of out to the extreme. Deftex, Andy's uh, speakers, Golden Ears, those, all those speakers that I just mentioned really like to be way out to the edges and pointed in. And that's a technique that work, and they'll work with these speakers. And that's a good way to get it to disappear. So if you have a chance, it's not, I just, I can't walk you through it because you have to do it step 
by step using a CD or some kind of uh, properly recorded medium that you know and trust. And you have to do that because it is a step-by-step -step process. Now, I've done this for 45 years, and I can do it without all of that, but I still use the CD because I know what to listen for. So when I'm towing them in and I'm doing all of this, I'm listening for very specific things. That is, I mean, I created and invented a lot of it, right? So, but you're not that familiar with it. So it's best to get the CD, take it step by step, put this track on, expect this. If you don't get it, here's what you do, and we'll get you there, okay? All right. Thanks for the question, but take it easy.